Yeah, I mean, pod can't get stopped. Welcome to the the, the tripod, uh, the webcam sessions. Uh, yes. Corn dream edition. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, corn dream. <laughs> quarantine giveth and quarantine taketh away. Really. I don't. I would giveth. I'd like you to expand a bit. Well, I don't know what the giveth. Did tryhards? It was kind of born out of. Uh, I know? guess. Well, no, not really. I think it, it happened despite. <laughs> despite the quarantine it was difficult to get started that's true that's i think true. par assembling the crew was out of like shit wasn't going on in film maybe yeah yeah like, that, that's that's together. fair that's fair to say that's fair let's to make say. this happen hey boys yeah, yeah and then tripod episode. was was birthed out of just uh pure hubris that anyone uh, yeah. would want more of us <laughs> is what it is so i mean shit sometimes yeah these guys record a couple episodes and get a big head yeah i mean we do have a couple super loyal fans shout out uh brandon oh one of the uh rave owls is a loyal listener oh so. he is he is that, this, 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 this is the, the only free on the shout out yeah. <laughs> yeah the only yeah. free shout out that i'm i'm into here is Dude, i'm yeah. looking around my room looking for shit to shout out right now but yeah no nice. that's um i can't look around my room i have to stay fucking still otherwise <laughs> the light the because i i don't know if you guys know this but i live in heaven yeah. so you can Ryan see all died. this behind me if i move at all the light will take over yeah <laughs> like that is not one of those custom zoom backgrounds yeah no like my blinds are closed <laughs> <laughs> straight glass I mean, walls on yeah the plus side it's a beautiful day today it, it is it is Raining it's a good like day for eight. me to sit in my apartment with the blinds closed hey! it really is I mean, straight shit it was like my first experience working in film in torrential rain. Oof. Holy shit. When was that? That was uh, earlier this week. I want to say like Tuesday. It just, the rain didn't stop all day. And it was like, I don't know, 13, 14 hours. And just like. Yeah, that's rough, man. I think, uh, I think Hillary Duff made a song about that, right? <laughs> <laughs> just you can't sing for it. For everything, really. It's, yeah, that's actually true. There's the Duff song for that. I think it's called So Yesterday. But yeah, <laughs> uh, that is the, uh, the baptisma show up and get ricked on. I remember one day I was working and I had, I don't know if you guys remember, I had this super long brown coat. Yes. Yeah, I remember people thought I thought you looked like your mom. <laughs> it, it, it was a straight up women's coat. There was no bones about it. It was a hyper long. I saw somebody at work and they had a long and puffy North Face, and I was like, "Ooh, that's really nice." So I went to Tilly's and gripped a long and puffy Kirkland, and uh, straight up Costco down jacket to my yeah. below my knees, but woman fit. But I the dream. I can fit it. And I thought, yo, dude, this is the warmest thing ever. I am protected. I am safe. And then I pulled up to work one day with no umbrella. And I got absolutely doused. And down doth not agree with in <laughs> yeah. water. Yeah. My, like, it wasn't brutal, but, like, my ALM, who wasn't typically known for being sympathetic, was like, dude, what are you doing? Like, what do you have? Like, do you have nothing? I was before I even knew, like, okay, I need to rip a garbage bag open and fence or uh, make a poncho real quick here. <laughs> it was before any of the tricks I didn't know that in. until just now. That's a trick. It's a trick. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man, it's... The bad things we go through make us want the good and make us love the good, you know what I mean? You gotta pay your dues, man. You Straight. gotta pay your dues. Straight. Dude, I was actually, one of the reasons why I was so miserable that day was because I went to go pick up a tent and I didn't realize how much water had pooled in the top and all of it dumped inside of oh, my jacket. Nice. And so all of my layers were soaked on the inside and I was literally wet all day from I, the inside out. I would say from the inside <laughs> out. I mean, it, when you think about it, you're always wet from the inside out, depending whoa, on how whoa. inside Depends you're on trying how to get. how deep you're going, yeah, yeah. Inside your fleshy <laughs> meat cushion. <laughs> Get this camera play going. Ooh, sorry for our spot. Yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not on that quality level for camera play, pal. This <laughs> That's is, valid. Yeah, That's valid. I'm, um, I'm going to pull a muscle standing, sitting this still <laughs> for, for an hour. Gotta engage your core, baby. Relax. <laughs> uh, but yeah, dude, that is like one of the worst things you can do when you're setting up a tent and like the water drips down your arm sleeve and then gets in uh, and penetrates your armor penetrates your <laughs> layers that you spent so long laying out then it's for not it's for nothing 
Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm not bitter about it. Shit. No, um, because you paid your dues, and that's true. Are you allowed to share some news going on with Pow? It Pow's the big man. Me, it gets me dues. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So basically, some like career news for Pow. If we're getting into current events, I <laughs> got a temporary work permit to join IATSE and be a craft service person as opposed to a sustainability PA. I have nice. a dual citizenship right now, so I'm <laughs> half crafty, half PAing, and uh, it is it's it's it hurts my past self to say it's an upgrade, you know what I mean? It's like fuck. Or Man, upgrade's trying. an upgrade. It's not nothing wrong with saying it's an upgrade. It's I know, an upgrade. but it's like, damn! Like this whole time, I like had this chip on my shoulder, like <laughs> PA and like being a freaking sustainability PA, which is dope. And I still get to do the sustainability stuff from behind the crafty table and tell people which waste goes where and tell them about the yeah, you know yeah. different resources available to them. But yeah, man, less time, higher pay, I guess, is important as well. But you know, <laughs> it's um, yeah. That's 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 kind of like the main thing of wage slavery. I think is, is uh, <laughs> make yeah. a bit more money. And you know, it's possible that on Monday I will work an eight-hour shift. Wow, Un- unheard of. And that eight hours. What's the point? Yeah, <laughs> like, what? it's it's something that I don't think has happened to me since I don't even think it was happening to me in my landscaping days, man. Like I think freaking oh, I guess I had a few like short ones and a few. A few PA days that you wrap and you yeah. don't do the whole thing, but like to go into work and be like, yeah, I'm scheduled from, uh, you know, 8.30 to 5 or whatever. It's like, that's weird, but I don't, yeah, I don't think I've ever done an eight hour shift either. Straight. I've always been 10 to 10 to 12, like 10 to 12 hour shifts nice. the whole, my whole career as it yeah. were. Dude, Bots and I were talking about it. The 40-hour yeah. work week should be four 10-hour days. Dude, Because fuck, the difference man. between an 8-hour day and a 10-hour day, bro, and then you get an extra day off out of it, so much You're better. speaking my language right now, man. <laughs> that, that's that's what I do. I do four 10-hour days, and then, but I get four days off afterwards instead of three days off, so it's that's pretty money. sick. Yeah. Uh, so I work like an average 38-hour week or something like this. Uh, okay. But yeah, like even if it was just three days off, it would still be so worth it, man. Yeah. Fuck it, fuck an eight hour day. Like you're you're yeah. not, you know, missing more of life with that extra two hours to have right. an extra day off. It's so right. much better. Yeah, true for sure. True. Like, what yeah. are you? Yeah, what are you actually getting done after eight hour days? Generally speaking, that you aren't after a ten hour day. Like I I, I do uh, like tripod and stuff after ten hour day shifts and stuff like that. Like it's it's still you know little things like that are doable. Flex. But then with that extra fucking day, it's so much better. Yeah, you know, for sure. Freedom is the negotiation. Hey, can I get a little more freedom? What? Uh, no, 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 no. We need you six day, seven day, eight day week. Uh, yeah, that's pretty fucked, man. I mean, yeah. Some I don't know about the, that. Some of the people in the construction department and the movies, it'll be like, oh, you're. We need you to work on Saturday and Sunday. And then it's like, oh, so now I have to work twelve days in a row. Yeah, uh, is what you're asking. No thanks. And for the no, construction no. dudes who sometimes have. Sometimes not always have like slightly more routine than the shoot people. Like that's one thing, but for the transport department, some of them are coming down from Kelowna to work. Yeah. And they zip up on Friday night to go see their wife on Saturday. Yeah. And then zip back down to make it for, you know, start on 3 a.m. on Monday. And if they have to work Saturday or Sunday, it's like, oh, now I don't get yeah. to see my family for two weeks. It's like, yeah, that's rough. Yeah, my cousin, my cousin does that. He works construction, but he lives like he works construction down here, but he lives like up uh, up in the interior and he just kind of like boots home on Friday nights. It's a uh, it's a crazy life, but yeah, it's tough, man. But this is, yeah, there's no work up there. Right. right so <laughs> right. Make sacrifices to get ahead. Yeah, it's important because like I think if you don't make sacrifices, you won't get ahead if you're trying to like make moves like that's the key is yeah just ask the mayans bro (laughs) a lot of of sacrifices a lot of sacrifices heads down that pyramid i got a book for that (laughs) which one american god i don't want to spoil but celestine oh okay okay no spoiler celestine prophecy 
Yeah, what? You want me to grip it quick? Can we get? I, hold on, we hold do. on, hold we on. Do. Can we get DC and aid? Yo, pal, Fruit. can you pull that up? Can we get DC and aid? <laughs> the uh, no, I don't think so. Selic Yiku Kalistine prop hecky. It's an amazing book. <laughs> what does Deepak Chopper say about it? In his, I am it, a fraud. I am here to co-op spirituality for profit. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> Might just take the wind out of this quote. <laughs> in his inimitable style of great storytelling, Redfield opens up, opens us up to a world of insight, inspiration, synchronicity, and power. Wow, that's the first time I read that. That's Yo, uh, Tripod Monthly Book Club episode? Yo. I just want to read actually, one review from <laughs> that, that would actually be pretty sick. That, that, I don't think that's even a bad idea. It's actually pretty... I, I like that idea. Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman. <laughs> <laughs> and now I know how far you... Wait. Yeah, American no, God's it, Pro. Um, Dude, we're going to start cutting your audio that's during actually this true. time. I just mouths read... at the camera for a few seconds. <laughs> I want Everyone to knows. George R. Martin's review of this book. Original, engrossing, and endlessly inventive. George R. R. Martin. Cool. Are we going to bash Thrones again? No. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why you're trying to get me wound up here, pal. <laughs> I don't need an invite. <laughs> hey, yo, George, how sweet was that Comic Con tale? Was it worth freaking ruining all of our lives? How dare you <laughs> <laughs> ruining our lives? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Whatever. We've talked about it at least every other pod. It's true. It's true. You don't need to talk it's about it. It's topical. You talk about what you know. Yeah. I mean, you got to think, like, this is... If there was ever a time for him to finish the fucking book, it's got to be right now, right? right. Like, what's he Obviously. doing? Save he has no pizza legacy. parties to go to? Yeah. No pizza yeah. parties. <laughs> Inspiration hasn't struck me. Um, yeah, I don't even... Whatever. I mean, yeah. I'm just whatever. I wish that there was an amazing. <laughs> I wish there was an amazing. Pow's Pow's fucking board. stuffing down some feelings right now. I'm, I am for sure. Well, I don't want to spoil as well like the show. I know it's been it's been, medical. but let me just say that the ending had an opportunity to make female fucking people look better than they did, and it just just didn't. As far as that, that like, I think it was a pretty accurate portrayal. <laughs> Dude, uh, dude, no, man. The, the End of Thrones is just like a bunch. It, it's it's r slash men writing women like in a fucking nutshell, dude. Yeah, like it's duh, like, look, look at the, look at these better. look at these powerful women who are just like not written like humans. Right? <laughs> like, they're they're just caricatures. It, it, I mean, all like, the characters are, but particularly the women. I think it's true. It's true. They're yeah. They're just like uh, people don't act about this way. Boobs. Okay. Oh, That's all right. they're there for. They're just meat vehicles for yeah. the dudes to stuff them. Meat I think vehicles. ironically, though, once they stopped putting the boobs in the show, it was like it was less uh, less uh, complimentary Empowering. towards women anyway, like somehow. Like, totally, dude. It was the yeah. trade-off. It's like, hey, we're going to make you look good, but now you have to get naked You're, on camera. Yeah, yeah but like at that, at that time that, you know, they were, yeah, exactly. They were getting, you know, naked on camera, boobs out for the camera. The women were written better. And then when they stopped doing that, no boobs. Also, the writing stopped you. getting good. So then it was like right. it was like, like a think of think of the tomboy complex of Arya in season one. Like I don't right. want to make dresses. I don't, I want to fight. I want to do this. I don't want to be limited to this shit. It's like yeah, get that needle, girl. And then at the <laughs> end, it's like actually, even though I won, I'm still pissed. <laughs> yeah. And fuck everything that isn't me. I'm gonna get my vengeance. Yeah. You should see me in a car. <laughs> fuck. Yeah, man. I I really liked Arya's storyline uh, storyline up until the obvious departure from sanity. Yeah. Uh, that I'm sure everybody who's seen the show knows exactly where I'm talking about, but uh, I was hyped, dude. Uh, like, like Yagen Hagar was like uh, oh, my so fucking sick. favorite shit. Ryan's so boy. cool, but uh, that boy. just you know, she's just like one day she's like, yeah, uh, yeah, peace. Yeah. See, see you later. Yeah. And he's like, uh, yeah, like you owe us faces. And she's like, no, nah, I'm just gonna, no, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> Dude. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking teach you everything on how to be no one. And she's like, actually, I'm Arya Stark. <laughs> and he's like, wait, wait, like, no, you, that's illegal. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> and then uh, she's like, no, actually, I'm gonna get on a boat and yeah. just, I'm just gonna go because, yeah. like, now I'm fucking Arya Columbus. Yeah, uh, straight up. I don't know. Yeah, because at season five, I was thinking like this might be a cultural piece that can like change the perception. 
of women in the common freaking whatever lexicon like yo yeah i mean i think they were doing a good job damn it strong female characters for sure man like some damn of the best it. characters in that show absolutely i don't man. think it takes away from how they were portrayed in the beginning either yeah i agree i agree with that i don't know about that i think it does really well i don't know i was watching just season one i only got like six or seven episodes deep but i was just like looking at uh daenerys and how she went from this complete weakling to like mounting call drogo like even just that was so sick and then no i actually just yeah i don't know can we move on i'm getting <laughs> yeah, heartbroken on. here i'm getting heartbroken <laughs> Yeah. Uh, are there any other freaking strong? What are the strongest portrayals of women now? The old strong guard? portrayals of women. Have you guys um, seen that new one on Netflix? The old guard. Uh, no. Theron. No, I have not. How about Mad Max. Oh, Mad Max. There's yeah. That's that's a good example. That's a good example. Great movie. Charlize is sick. You guys seen Prometheus? Uh I, I I've really seen beautiful. Prometheus, but I could not tell you what happens in exactly. it. Exactly, uh, <laughs> I Same. vaguely remembered parts of the movie. So Prometheus begins before it even like gets into the plot. It's an alien movie. It's from yeah. the Alien series, and um, it starts with this like light, like glowing being that's like super chiseled out of stone. He like eats a pill and then dissolves into this super you know untouched by man landscape and then basically it's like the origin of humanity comes from this like super species that yeah sacrifices themselves and it's all about them like finding the first alien and trying to find infinite life in the wayland corporation or whatever i could get into it for a long time but yeah i i, I don't think it's necessary <laughs> Charlize was dope. The protagonist was a female. She was dope. Yeah. She was strong. Oh, dude, same franchise. Fucking Sigourney Weaver in True. the original. Yeah, yeah. Badass that's good. Chick. Fucking uh, uh, who plays Sarah, Sarah Connor in Terminator. Sarah Connor? Yes, that's Terminator. another fucking good one. When she's doing the pull ups, ah! yeah, she's a beast, dude. Who was so Sarah? Jeff. Who played her? Uh, I, I can't, can't remember her name. Uh, Jamie, pull that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hey. Our producer, sorry to just break. <laughs> How's my mic holding to the mouth? Am I breathing too much? It's Linda Hamilton. Linda Hamilton. You sound good Linda to me. Hamilton. Yeah. Nice. Thank thanks. You. Thanks, Jamie. I guess I could ask Captain Frisk. Yeah. <laughs> we Captain love Frisk. You. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? With, you guys are actually putting your fucking real name on your Zoom thing. What's up with that, man? I mean, oh, this yeah. is my real name, Captain Frisk Daniels. That's, my bad. That's my Dude, real. Dude, I was thinking about one of my favorite Ryan pseudonyms yesterday, actually. Was uh, when you dressed as a pirate for Halloween last year? Peg Dick the pirate, <laughs> long long dong silver. That's the one that I remember. Yeah, yeah, long, long dong. He he goes by many names. Long dong silver. Peg Dick the pirate. Peg I said I had a peg dick and two eye patches. It was brilliant. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. All right, I can't get these commands live. Is this gonna fuck everything? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You can yeah. yeah don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh. Okay. 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 Yeah, I'll change it. I don't know how to You don't want the wrong body. people finding out who we are, Powis. This is true. This is true. Dude, we're on like... Zoom, man. The fucking... <laughs> <laughs> the Chinese government is watching the podcast Dude, early right now. Don't worry. My phone's <laughs> in arm's reach away. The Huawei doth listen to us now. If you mention Jeez. any sort of support for Hong Kong, the podcast is just going to end. <laughs> Shoutouts to Mesut Ozil, bro. Oh, Careful. my God. This guy on Arsenal, this soccer player, basically was like, hey, actually, should we even get into this? Uh, I would I would tread very lightly. I mean, whatever. It is what it Dude, is. Dude, it's fine, man. We're such small fry. No one gives a shit. It's true. We can say whatever we want. Hope I can walk later. But yeah, he just <laughs> called out um, Chinese government for state-sponsored genocide of the Uyghur right? people. Yeah. And Arsenal suddenly has decided to disassociate themselves from their ah, highest played player rough. and he's their number 10 and they're sick as stud i guess he's kind of like lazy and that's how they're kind of spinning it but he actually genuinely doesn't fit the style of play that they play either but they have no center mids and they have like yeah, one guy who's like yeah, the sickest one he the definitely sickest could do better than some people they have in the team so but <clears throat> whatever i mean it's like everything it's in the guy middle got blackballed yeah and yeah rough yeah 
you know, you the crazy be... thing is, is he might go to China or something like that and just make a shitload of money. He's not going to China. <laughs> they canceled his Weibo. Okay, Russia, 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 maybe the Ruskies. They, they destroyed his Rebo Weibo account. They like said we're not going to play Arsenal games if he's in the squad, and then they're like, oh, don't worry population that we need the money to keep this squad going he doesn't exist to us either (laughs) (laughs) that's like that's like everything man is everyone needs the chinese viewership honestly dude like how are we gonna expand into that market for tryhards oh we already have don't worry i'm working on that one behind the scenes man (laughs) uh full translations um you know it's it's really coming up big we should do not even dubbed versions but we just have like body double versions where it's just chinese versions of us Mm, sick I wonder if there's any brown skinned Chinese people. Oh, dude, uh, shoddy, shoddy Zach. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's mine. He's mine. I got him. I got him. He yeah, doesn't want to be Powers. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> right. Fair. Like, if he wants to be one of us, it's not Powers. I'll take my buddy Wesley. I'm down with it because a term for people that are half black and light skinned is yellow. Is so it? If I were, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. I like, hadn't heard that. Yellow, look at you. Hey, Powers, we're black. You're yellow. <laughs> That's the type of shit I hear all the time. You know, Powers, if you went to Africa, they'd call you a Zungu. Yes, James, I know. Every African I know calls you a Zungu, so... Don't have to go to Africa to learn that shit. Um, but, yeah, Frick, I wanted to say something, China. Uh, oh, my buddy, Rasmus, shout outs. Uh, from work told me that he like walked through China one time and he said, I don't know where he was. Walked me. through China? Just walked through it all. Dude, no, just a uh, maybe he was in Shanghai or something, but he said it was so rare. He's tall. He's like, I don't know, six, four, six, five. Yeah. He's tall. Um, maybe six, six, Kev. He's <laughs> tall and they were like. And he's white, and they just stop it. They they were stopping him all the time to take photos of him. And right, this is a novelty. Like, like, oh my god, are you kidding me? Like, look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. People just like, like coming up to him, a basketball player, just aggressively <laughs> coming up to him, handing him, take my baby, and then take a photo with the baby. Like, no way. He's like four or five times, like, yeah. just walking from one place to another is not uncommon at all. So I can That's only strange, imagine man. if our eclectic trio peruse the streets it happened to um my cousin in india they went like four years ago around christmas and she's indian obviously but the rest of their crew was all white and they got stopped everywhere for people just to take pictures with them yeah, yeah, like yeah a group of white people walking around india is just not very common i guess Crazy, <laughs> so she uh dude that's like, the, they, that's they the, the fucking pictures with you <laughs> That's the ultimate privilege, white privilege, right there. Is you just we just decimate these fucking uh, these peoples. We show up imperialism for hundreds of years, and then now, like, I can fucking walk around in India and, and be just famous white guy just because yeah. I'm famous. Yeah, like, dude, no repercussions. No, none. <laughs> I mean, none. well, life is long. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Are we calling for genocide right now? Dude, there's already a white genocide happening, brother. Okay? All right. This this podcast is going to take a different turn right now. I might be the only white guy on the podcast. Scourge. Scourge. This is the point where Ryan's mic gets muted. Yeah, right. uh, No, uh, that podcast market is already saturated, dude. The white genocide (laughs) podcast market. there's There's a lot of... They were doing that shit before podcasts were a thing. The whole like uh, private sh- private conservative radio and stuff like that. Uh, that's been going on for a long time. Right. Fuck. Uh, mutual friend of Jer and I, Somit, has been having some rumblings about starting his own radio station. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah? He's like, you buy a tower for five-figure sum and then broadcast to, you know, basically south to east vancouver with that level of... Like on like uh, FM radio? Indeed. Type shit? Really? Yeah, that. that- yeah. Who listens to the radio? Yeah, I was I was gonna say that seems like a dead technology. You know, yeah. but you can you can just can you just though? broadcast online? Yeah, but you know, I don't know. And I mean, whatever he feels is a cool idea. Good for him, it, but no, for sure. But if you think about like accessibility, like sure, everybody's got a phone and everybody's got a data plan. Not yeah, everyone wants to stretch that. I mean, I guess Spotify is as easy as anything, but. There are still radios built into every vehicle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I guess. That's I, don't, really I, de- I definitely I do listen not to listen to the radio. Nah, aux cord all day. Yeah. Or Bluetooth. And even myself in my beautiful 2003 Honda Odyssey that doesn't have aux capabilities, 
I, um, you know, got one of those FM transmitters or what have you to oxify my stuff. But I would posit that we're, the three of us are a little, slightly more techie than the common person. I mean, we're doing a freaking video pod with our own freaking gear right now. Right. I don't think random McGee could just do it. Basic McSimpington can just do it, <laughs> but I know that they can turn their stuff to 94.5. Like, I radio guess. hits are still hits, you know? Like, how are radio hits, just because they play it on the radio, make it I, No, I think the bigger hits, though, are, like, online listens. There's streams and stuff like that, isn't it, now? Like, it's, yeah, it's big like, who's... Like- who's getting the most listeners on Spotify and shit like that, I think is, yeah. is how hits are decided. I mean, hits are decided by just like, you know, but like how what labels made? decide to put out, but Dude, how are they paid? Tick, TikTok oh, videos, man. Yeah, TikTok yeah that's songs. actually, that's actually a big deal. Honestly, the songs that people I hear singing, they're like, Oh yeah, I got the song stuck in my head. It's yeah. From like uh, this, this TikTok song. And yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick. Yeah. I'm like out of the zeitgeist. Yeah. I'm just the like talk. TikTok is one I got to be careful about. Dude, we're kind of like old, so short attention True. span shit. And I'm also like, this is just children doing dances. That was a lot of this popular shit. And I'm like, ah, yeah. Do, do I want to spend my time up, watching dancing children? Yeah. yeah, definitely not trying to end up on that list. What yeah. do you? Uh, <clears throat> what do you think about TikTok, Ryan? Uh, I think uh, have fun, kids. You know, yeah. like who fucking sure. cares? Go do your thing, right? Yeah. Like. A, we did all sorts of shit the generation before us didn't understand. No doubt, no I am doubt. so glad that TikTok didn't. Actually, you know what? That's not true. Because, I, dude, I finally finished my Twitter purge. And, oh, ah, my goodness. Yeah. It took me, over the <laughs> course of two different days, it took me five and a half hours to go through my Twitter account. Something like 4,500 tweets down to, like, 850. Because I'm like, yeah. I can't have this shit yeah. on my profile. Yeah, it's just, just like, like, so much of it's just, like, it's it's... It's not funny enough to be worth the no. problematic nature of it, right? Like, exactly. Like, if you've got like a like, I've got a couple on there that still have you know a bit of a, a bit of stuff in there, but like they're good jokes or something, or like funny yeah. things that happen that I'm just like detailing or whatever. So yeah. I'm good with that. But the, then yeah. some other shit that I wrote on there is just like, <laughs> come on, dude. Like paging doctor friend, <laughs> paging not doctor homie. Bad, but yeah, there's some rough stuff on there. That's not cool. Or just like saying shit that I'm like, did I really think anyone cared about this? Oh yeah. <laughs> like I, I love most of that stuff. It's just like, you know, whatever. Like I can't I can't just pretend I wasn't that person, you know? Sure. Right? <laughs> I left I left a good amount of that kind of stuff in yeah. there. But like yeah. yeah. There's just other stuff in there where it's just like, wow, crazy. Absolutely. It's just like a, a like a look into nineteen year old me. Yeah, and right. Just like, yeah. Surprise, surprisingly immature, right? Like, uh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, like you, you look at yourself now and you think I'm not that different, but like, that's damn, exactly like what I, I am that different. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I thought the exact same thing. Yeah, I was like strangely I'm childlike, pretty immature, and I'm definitely still like I'm, I'm a cross between a child and an old man. Yeah, <laughs> I guess you at, could... at this point or in your Twitter verse. No, like at this point, right? Where I'm like, I still fuck around. I, I, you don't want ever want to let go of that like ch- like what's the word like you don't want life to become too serious right yeah, yeah, yeah. i think i'm i think i'm incapable honestly which <laughs> yeah. might be might end up being a good thing i just can't do it i can't pass up opportunities for jokes and shit i can't take anything oh, seriously yeah. <laughs> so i i had a similar moment i was um looking back at this novel i started oh, yeah. writing seven nice. years ago um and i like got i don't know i guess i did seven chapters on google drive and published four chapters on my blog spot right. and read them and was cringing at like wow pow you thought you weren't being like with chauvinistic right, right with right. this and like super shallow but then I kind of read it and kind of refell in love with it. Like the, at the core, the same fundamentals of like love and friendship are there, but with a little bit too much, a um, little bit too much me, 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 me. But I think I just cranked the outline. It's going to maybe be 21 or 22 chapters and I might just freaking finish the shit. Just dude, to, absolutely, just to man. Little, finish, um, finish projects, dude. 
right? Fuck, I mean, that's that's advice that I can give that I've never been able to follow myself. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Shoot. so many unfinished projects. Yeah, <clears throat> but it's kind of cool. Like now that we're you get a little bit older, you get some time. Yeah, you you. Yeah, they're all unfinished, but like we've laid down the groundwork for things. Right, right. That we've like we've set up catch-alls for like everything. Like if I want to write a story, I've got an ultimate thing for that. If I want to draw, I've got a comic book thing. If I want to yeah. rhyme, I've got this thing. If I, you know what I mean? And like even though all that stuff was unfinished in the past, now yeah. I've got the buckets. And that well, was it's even, it's even cool yeah. just to have like a like a portfolio of maybe not finished things, but just like how much you've done in, in all these different areas. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, I consider myself a, a reasonably creative person and like, I definitely have a track record to show that. Like I have all sorts yeah. of stuff finished and unfinished in different creative areas that like, you know, it takes a step back and look at it and like, Oh shit, I actually, I made a lot of stuff. Right. Just, yes. just a, a bit of a, a nitpick to be like, man, maybe I should fucking finish some stuff. You're, you're actually really right. That's really amazing to say because like swinging man being creative making the shit you yeah, get just do it reps like you can the time spent writing a novel or a story or a book can influence your rhyming can influence sure, your yeah. freaking sports like you're thinking like when you're on the field thinking about that freaking line in the book my stuff my book is kind of sports related so you know i can go into that time like oh what would this fictional character you know what i mean it's all what would this fictional character do or how would they behave yeah. and how can i honor that by like doing it in real life yeah i feel like know? that's a, that's some life shit though it's like life is like about making goals and working towards goals I mean, fuck, fuck achieving goals because, I mean, does anybody actually do that shit? You know, maybe a couple once in a while, but, like, no, it's about, Honestly. like, trying to do shit and sometimes doing shit. Try hard. Yeah. Trying um, hard. Try trying really hard. pod. Ah. <laughs> nice. Keith Stone. Well, I mean, <laughs> the cliche is that, like, when you achieve the goal, it's not done. The whole idea is that you fall in love with the process right and that's right yeah, you yeah, carry yeah. With you well i mean that's what the right? that's what all the time goes into right like right the accomplishment is like oh well now you're not doing the thing anymore right like right yeah they say a quote i really liked is winning isn't everything wanting to win is motherfucker <laughs> yeah this is this is this is actually this is really good for my uh self-apologetic <clears throat> bullshit where like now i can be like dude there's yeah i don't need to finish these projects like <laughs> if i finish them like we talked about this on the pod man if i finish them then they're not there anymore man i gotta really True. i gotta keep this going you know okay yeah. so i'm curious about going back to an old project that's unfinished and okay. then like trying to complete it yeah you know we've talked about like trying to get into a headspace that you were in yeah mm. when you were making something do right. you find that that like how does having a different mindset affect how you try and finish it i got some amazing help from my buddy at work because i just said to him like dude this is not my stuff anymore this is not and he said to me, bro, you can work that evolution into your, for me, it was my story, my book, we'll call it. You can work that evolution into it. So maybe in 2013, you were a chauvinistic pal. Yeah. And I can't really hop back into that. Like, <laughs> this might seem right. untrue, but I can't feel that I could just hop right back into like, wow, that chick's hot. <laughs> this woman <laughs> has beautiful eyes and tight pants and makeup and she's adjusting her bra. I'm getting warm and sweaty. Like I, you know, kind of crave the freaking... I want to finish George R. R. Martin's work <laughs> and give the world their Khaleesi and their Kalathar. Um, but yeah, so he just told me, like, dude, work the evolution into the piece. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do. But for music, if I were to write something about, like, like I wrote some sad shit back in the day, mm -hmm. and now I don't want to get into that summoning of sadness. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even fucking touch it now. I wouldn't even do, I wouldn't even write a sad song because that last EP I put out, Confiscate the Vibe, available pcrook.bandcamp.com. Sick. I listen to that shit and it flips me. <clears throat> it's just like I was in such a good headspace when I did it. Mm -hmm. And I even said in one of my songs, like, yo, um, 
growth. Fuck, I can't even dox myself. I don't remember. remember <laughs> shit. Uh, the, my new bliss mischievous take me back to teething. And now I've got this new position where I go back to square one after being a PA for five years and like knowing a bunch of PA stuff. Now I'm Nostradamus, dude, position. the prophet, Nostradamus, Nostradamus, post, <laughs> post Nostradamus, dude. I say it in the <laughs> say it to the mic and the world give it back. Right. Yeah, man, so I I I, I, I I like that. That that's kind of cool. I music wise, I love going back to old projects and like trying to pick up from where I left off. Like I, I yeah. really enjoy doing that. So yeah. I don't know, a bit of a, a bit of a different way around. Although I guess when I'm working on music stuff, I, I guess it's less focused on like, uh, like lyric writing and, and theme and stuff right. like that. And more just instrumental sound structure. Right. I would say that at the beginning of quarantine, like March, I made or started making a song called slow me down. Um, about, you know, you don't have to just, hyper grind and get this progress and you know be the best just do you and enjoy life and it's you can slow me down slow me down slow me down you can slow me down and then i started hanging out with zach a lot and then you speed the, the fuck up that, and i was like slow me down <laughs> do your best mate decelerate is accelerate remember no need transport me to the everglades i go slow my bike begs me not to break like i was just like oh okay so <laughs> I, I just disagree with these first two verses now like I, <laughs> like whatever but it's hard man it's i guess it's cool though you just keep making music based on your mood mm -hmm. yeah making things well actually Par gave me some good advice about who's par, our director, uh, our producer, <laughs> making this our shit par producer. Uh, oh, because uh, Sonny and I, Sonny's one of the guys on the uh, Nomad crew. And we're Respect. making a little short. It's, and, that's weird. I only know him so. from uh, the Magic: The Gathering group. Uh, oh shit! The only I, yeah. know uh, we, I don't we, know. We got him in. Yet. We got him in. I only know him from <laughs> AEW watching. So. Oh <laughs> yeah. Watch that wrestling. Anyway, um, try quads. So yeah, the, the... <laughs> <laughs> try quads. Try, try quads is sick. I like that. Fourth member. <laughs> try quads. Um, we're making a short, and the subject matter is some pretty close to home shit. Nice. And my concern was going back to that subject matter because I feel like I've kind of moved past where I was at at that time and those feelings. Mm. But the advice that Parr gave, that was pretty good. He was like, if you go back to it and it's bringing up feelings, it means that you probably have unresolved shit related Yo. to that. And that I was like, that's true. This Resolve. guy have a Parr HD. <laughs> <laughs> or I was like, that kind of helped me because I was like, yeah, if this does bring up things, then it's probably some unresolved feelings there that I thought that I, you know, so you will yeah, maybe. face that. <clears throat> It's interesting. It's an interesting little like thought exercise. Totally, to, like, man. Go back to this old feeling, and it's nice percent. where you can go back to it as like a like a what's the word? As like a spectator. Yeah, you're like on the outside of it, and you can kind of look back at it with a little bit of hindsight or a little bit of perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for so, sure, for sure. That's cool. That's deep. Digging up the bones, baby. <laughs> Digging up the of bones. Of the crypt. <laughs> Why'd you have to bury it down here? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, moved, we moved past it. We moved past it. My bad. No my more bad. thrones. Okay. No more thrones. How many people do you think have written their version of how the show should have ended? <laughs> how the books should end? Like, they've written so their many. own final book or final books. <laughs> my, my fanfic knowledge rose and died with dragon ball z there was after dragon ball z there was a huge fanfic called dragon ball af oh god which was just like <laughs> dragon ball's not done it's not <laughs> it's not over let's keep making it oh the saiyans will get blue hair and now they'll have pink hair and now they'll have red hair and then fucking 15 years later the actual dragon ball people are like okay yeah they'll have blue hair they'll have pink hair <laughs> uh, they'll have red hair and Fuck it, let's just give him black hair again. Fuck it. <laughs> like, Full circle. But yeah, those fanfics came to life. I have not... I, I mean, I guess I didn't read all the Game of Thrones. But you ever see those, like, how it should have ended? Like, there was a How I Met Your yeah. Mother, someone, like, cut it up. How oh, it dude, yeah. Ended. For sure, man. I've, I've watched some, uh, some pretty... 
long YouTube videos on like how Thrones should have ended. And a few of them are like really, like really make sense. Like they really right. do tie up storylines really nicely. Right. Um, but yeah, do I mean. use footage, Ryan? What? Do they use like footage from the show or is it just like a dude narrating over a slideshow type thing? Uh, like a little mix of both. I think cool. uh, like cool. the the main thing is the guy narrating and outlining the, you know, the actual story uh, points that they think should have happened. Right. But um, yeah, like a few of them were like really a lot better. Who is that absolute God strictly explained? Was that it? I don't know. The, the Game of Thrones guy who had the black text over the white background. And, like, oh, uh, alt, alt shift X. I think so. Yeah, yeah that's that's ones. definitely the best Game of Thrones like uh, oh. thing. Yeah, I that watched was the that reason after, why like, the everyone. show got ruined for me because Honestly. I watched all of the videos on where it could go in the final season. Nah, man, that, that 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 was that was like <laughs> almost the best part for me. I think was was yeah, all the true. all the the outside of the show analysis and it's discussion true. and stuff. It's so true. It's like a community after, around it, right? Like it's it was. It's like being. Uh, it's like you know following it, right? But it did also kill it. Yeah. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. I think it. I think, it, I think it kept interest itself. high. Well, mm. I remember after the first time we saw freaking flashback, burn them all, and I was like, "What?" And then go on the Reddit the next day. I was literally texting TJ Randawa for over an hour. Yeah, like firing text back and forth. Like I'm at Crew Park, he's somewhere else. Like, dude, if they did this, does this mean the brand can see this? Does this mean that? Yeah. Does this mean like? And it. Could it have lived up? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know if that's. I don't know if that matters though. That that it in the end it didn't live up to yeah that hype. I think that that hype in and of itself is like that was the fun, right? Yeah. Like like dude, like, the the during it, it was all that much fun, right? Like that's that's really what I care about was Break, the enjoyment was the same. during what it is, right? Like yeah, it's pretty soul crushing that the the conclusion was very disappointing and not good. But uh, that doesn't. I don't think that cheapens um, the actual enjoyment during it. It just, you know, in hindsight, makes it look a little worse. You're, you're a hundred percent right, because the the joy of after every episode being along for the ride, yeah, riding those memes, going <laughs> yeah. through. Like, did anyone notice? Like. I mean, before they had like that dude who was that extra in every single thing. It was like, yo, yeah. this sub character. Anyone notice Kyburn in the background in like season one? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. da 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 da. I was like, oh, no way. But yeah, the attention to detail that I wasn't aware of. And then there would be people on Reddit like, yo, here's the whole shot composition layout and what the shots mean from yeah. all of Game of Thrones. And I didn't even clue in to when Ned Stark was debating going to Winterfell. He was in the middle of the thing, and he had Catelyn over one shoulder and freaking Sir Braids on the right. Yeah, and Sir Braid. One Sir Braid. one was saying one thing, and one was saying the other, and it yeah. was like I didn't even pick up on this beauty. I didn't pick up on the stag getting. Yeah, frayed. but like that. That's like that's half the reason that the analysis and stuff is so much fun because, like, yeah. yeah you know, plebs like us probably don't pick up on a ton of the right, stuff that's right. actually going on. Right. And then you get yeah. to appreciate it on another level that like, if there wasn't that kind of discussion, that stuff would remain over our heads. A lot of it anyway. Yeah. That's true. But I will say I won't entertain stuff like that for Boku no Hero Academia. Same. I went on the Boku no Meta Academia um, subreddit, which is all memes I got two really good memes from their top this month, and then the rest like pointed out a few things that I didn't really know about the show that kind of dulled the spark, and I was like, yeah. no, no, I don't want, oh, this could happen, but this can't happen. I was like, throw my phone out the window. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to know this shit. I know everything that I love about Boku no Hero. I don't need to know anything else. Yeah, I don't that's fair. Hear- that's fair too, man. Like, I mean, it's your enjoyment, right? <laughs> yeah, it is, right? So don't tell me <laughs> how to love my shit. Because here's the thing. The reason I don't have a child, the reason my mother goes at home every night and wishes. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not following that at all. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take it to the danger zone. To all the pod watchers out there, you deserve a treat if you're on YouTube. Oh yeah, yes you do. I'm gonna be- <laughs> That's so good. You gotta get the close-ups there too. Uh, 
what? the uh, original impression was that promo where the guys were basically kissing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We watched- I mean, we could demonstrate. Nah, nah. Because <laughs> Eddie Kingston lost. Ooh, spoiler. Don't you guys tangle got- mustaches there for a second? He got That's choked true. out with barbed wire. Yeah, that was rough. intense. A barbed wire rough. headlock, and it was just fucking... Stop! I quit. I I I I I quit. I quit. I bet you there is there an auto. Do you remember where every like viral video there's like an auto tuned version of it for a while? Yeah. Do I yeah, remember? That was a thing, man. Jesus. I mean. Do I remember? How has <laughs> had a ten second long text tone in grade twelve? It wasn't. Double rainbow all the way across the sky. <laughs> that was one of the sick ones. <laughs> Mine was win here, win there, win, win everywhere, where absolute victory. Oh, the fucking uh, Charlie Sheen. You yeah. know yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That guy absolutely took over the planet for a month and a half. And that was around the time Pow was really into like making iron on shirts. Oh, and he had right. a shirt. Yeah. Of- Charlie Sheen's head with like a tiger on top of it, and it was like dripping blood. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, he had. It was Charlie Sheen's face was fucking tiger blood all over it. Yeah, Ridiculous. Right. And then I had another one that was a tiger, but the stripe spelled winning. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually winning. Sick. It was so sick. <laughs> winning just took over. Winning. Are Dude, you it, it bipolar? Was just, it was such a fucking. I, are meme. you bipolar? I'm by winning. Are you bipolar? I'm by winning. <laughs> it was an absolute like, like in real life meme. Watching it unfold, like it, it was. Is, yeah. Oh my god! Respect. I mean, I think Shall a lot we? of it too was that the the just primitive nature of mainstream memes at the time was just everyone was hungry for a big meme mm-hmm. like this. Like oh, it was like true. at the time it was like fucking rage comics and shit, you know all that yeah, pure yeah. cringe. Right. Yeah. Right. right. You need oh! a strong, timeless meme like Tar- Charlie Sheen. Right. It was a couple interviews. That's all we needed. Boom. Yeah. He was like the highest paid dude on Two and a Half Men, and then s- split for some reason. Because he, f- he was a he was a madman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was out of his mind. <laughs> He was banging seven gram rocks. Yeah. <laughs> I actually like forget about the promo strength of that yeah. fucking thing. That was all one Please. interview. That was, all, that? that was pretty much all one. Yeah, interview. it was it was mostly yeah. the one thing, yeah. Just so many <laughs> clips from it. He was just so unapologetically yeah. him. Like, I was banging seven bang. <laughs> Winning. Come on, bro, I got tiger blood. <laughs> You borrow my brain and be like, dude, can't handle it. <laughs> was Charlie here, Sheen ever here. like actually good in anything? Uh in like the eighties he was pretty big. He was, he was yeah, in, like, I, I um, like he had a lot of roles. Like I I can't in, think off the top of my head like anything that I was he like, 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 oh he's par- good. He was in a um, parody of like a war movie. Wasn't it? It was like a Rambo parody. Top gun. No. No. <laughs> um, Platoon. He was yeah, he was in Platoon, right? He was in. Um, yeah. Okay. Was Was he in Wall Street? He was. Uh, no. Isn't that was Martin Sheen? Street. No. Isn't that his dad? It was him and his dad. Yeah. Him and. Oh, it is. It is. I mean, I, I don't. Think so. Yeah. Hot shots. Never mind. Yeah, I was. Th- I was gonna say Platoon's not a parody. <laughs> Platoon's kind of like a like... fucking horror movie almost. <laughs> yeah. I like having Jamie pull it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, no. no. Uh, Wall Street was absolutely nasty it was great i feel like uh i could probably watch it again and enjoy it but i don't think i got through it when i watched it at the time i was was too bored i don't know if it and please people in the comments don't murder me for this i don't know if it stands to people in the comments it's just brandon (laughs) brandon and me i think like wolf Wolf of wall street is the 2020 wall street Mm. you know it's like all of the maybe maybe I should watch Wall Street again then because Wolf of Wall Street's an incredibly enjoyable movie and I did not get that vibe at all from Wall Street. Yeah, yeah, I I th- see Wall Street as like less y- manic. You're you know, exactly. Yeah, it's just less of a colorful. I guess right. Screaming more of like, a, are you tempted by money? What do you do for money? But I like I, I like Wolf of Wall Street because it is that like the ridiculous level it's it's a level where it's it's parody in and of itself 
right? And then, yeah. but also the the weird part of that is that I think most of the fans of that movie completely misunderstand that like you're not supposed to like these characters right like that's a problem like people people like yeah they like aspire to be like what's his fucking name uh jordan belfort yeah belfort they aspire to be like him right they think he's like amazing and stuff like no this guy's like i'm fucking staying this guy's an absolute piece of shit (laughs) like you should hate this guy fun to watch a movie about him but like no i mean that's that's some like life is pro wrestling shit where like uh, it always is man people don't draw the line between what's fiction and what's reality yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, people watching reality... all the fucking anti-hero shows and like actually yeah. identifying with the protagonists and stuff like right you know it's, it's identifying... cool to root for them in the show but you don't want to be like these guys right they're identifying with the yacht they're identifying <laughs> with the bills yeah and yeah, the yeah, yeah women and the women dude the material like, they... success right honestly dude yeah and it's a seductive thing. Fucking my one buddy at work was like, Powers gets a raise. Let's see if he's still an environmentalist after this shit. Nah, nah, Coming nah. to work in these button ups and shit. I'm like, dude, that's not what it's about. He's like, bro, you're going to be burning down the freaking oil sets. <laughs> no, yeah. No, yeah, I mean, Bolsonaro over here. Dude doesn't know where the button ups came from. Yeah. Straight. Environmental ass. Uh, Hand me down, yeah. but not. I, I, I know that's a bit of a facetious uh, take the guy's making there, but like, dude, so many people like actually seem to hold that belief. That like, as soon as you have a little bit of money, you're like, oh, you, oh, you'll be a conservative as soon as you have some money. But like, mm. fuck that. No, absolutely not. Fuck this. Like, uh, fuck you. I got mine. Shit. Like, no. I think yeah. it depends where you come from. Yeah. Maybe. If I think you, it just depends you on like from... your inner character to begin with, right? Like, sure. It, I think it's like the the people who end up that way were always just out it out for themselves in the first place right like right. you don't i don't think you suddenly become that way i think that that kind of mentality is a lot more likely to be born from a person who's born affluent and might not oh understand. easily yeah you know so but like if you're a person who's affluent from birth you might not have the appreciation for what you have whereas if you come from like less wealth so to speak, you have more of an appreciation for it. Yeah, the, I mean that that that's fair, but there's also You're like less likely to get corrupted. The the other side of that though is that you you'll have people who who do end up that way who came from very little, because once they do get some right, like then it's like hold on to it all, like don't share it. Like I finally got, I got mine right. So I think it's like a, a an inner character thing at the end of the day, right? Like it's yeah, true. It's a strength of character kind of thing, I think. But um, it is. What kind of people are you surrounding yourself with? Totally. Yeah, sure. Right. Stuff like that. What kind of influence do your parents have on you? If your parents are kind of like, oh, I'll let you do your own thing. Or if your parents are like, no, we're going to instill humility and like an appreciation in you. I think that's important. For me, it's very experiential. There's very much a pendulum thing to it because. A few years ago, I was, like, hyper hippie in that, you know, like, I'm not going to buy new things, uh, you know, and then went through some life stuff and filled the hole with retail therapy and was just like, whoa, I can buy jerseys. I'm going to buy jerseys (laughs) a lot starting now and bought a bunch and then I've just, like, pretty much bought everyone I want from history, essentially. Of course, every team turns out for a year to try to peak yeah. again. <laughs> but the point is, like, now I'm at this point where I haven't bought new clothes in a while, haven't even, like, stepped in winners, like, to get socks. I'm getting my socks and undies from Dude. Cody Bots. Yeah, same, I'm man. I, underwear. I, yeah, I don't know. The underwear stuff, man, nah. You, you... They're fresh. I, it's like I'm one not or two wears. convinced. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of hand-me-down undies in my time. But uh, actually, Botsy, he, he just gives me a bag of stuff. And he's like, yeah, man, like, whatever you don't take, I'm just going to, like, give away to Goodwill or whatever. I mean, I that's like, a good strategy, man. I've done that a couple times. Yeah, well. yeah. And then I went, came home from the turf and was wearing some socks of his. He was like, wait a minute. And then I took my boots off. He's like, dude, there's holes in those socks. <laughs> they weren't meant to be handed down. I'm like, dude, from the ankle up, no one know. <laughs> right, I'm going to the turf with these Under Armour socks. I'm, I don't care if my if this toe is peeking. Oh, dude, no, All I right? can't stand that, man. Fucking uh, toes coming out of your socks. Hey. Any kind of exposed skin on the shoe, dude. Dude, speaking on that uh, on that jersey game to to springboard off, 
Uh, either of you guys up on those uh, new Canucks retro jerseys for this year? I wasn't a huge fan. I'm not either, dude. Which is weird because I like the one it's based on, the the kind of red uh, faded one. Like I like that one, but yeah. I'm not sold on this one yet. Well, my brother and I were talking about it. They had an opportunity to completely reinvent, maybe do a different color scheme or like do something different, dude. But they just didn't. Yeah, dude. They there was the so many on the uh, on the on the. Canucks. It looks like they made it on Microsoft Paint. It's like a gradient. It is, green yeah. Transition Honestly. and like. All of the other jerseys in the rest of the league from that whole collection are absolute gold. I don't know about yeah. all of them. But so many of them are, though. I would say, like, 27. Like, yeah. the, the Maple Leafs fucking sucks. That one was pretty bad. <laughs> the Penguins one's just a plain white jersey. Yeah, but the Bruins so is many bad, of too. Them are Detroit so was kind of basic, too. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but yeah. a lot of them, they took their sick retro jerseys and, like, flipped. Colorado, colors. baby. Oh, Colorado. Colorado. So fucking sick. Nordiques, bro. Oh, it's so good. It With the colors. colors. Yeah. Oh, the um the co- coyotes is coyotes sick as hell too. Sick. Uh yeah, the ducks, I like the ducks one a lot. The wild You know which one I love? The Canadians. That one's pretty cool. The blue, it's like that all blue with yeah. a red stripe. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I haven't seen many blue Canadians jerseys. I think No, it's always red. I think there was maybe one right. back in the day, Bots, he kinda half schooled me, but like yes. And the Canucks one come on. They couldn't do the disc. I mean, I love the yeah, dude. dude the there was there's yeah, there were so many fucking good ones on like the Canucks subreddit and stuff where it was like uh, like white and green um, flying skate and stuff like that, and like it all oh, it looked so v. good. Yeah, or even flying like different v. flying V's and stuff looked good, and like they were sick. And then green. I just don't really like the one they chose. I love blue and green together, and I loved it in like 2011 or 2010 when they brought back yeah that thing and made those. That was super cool. Well, it was a reinvention, and then right? yeah, 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 and yeah. like a callback, but then. It's just been that for so long. It's not novel. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's right. Like novel. it 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 doesn't feel Dude, like a like how a, sick a fun would it have jersey. Been if right. they had gone with like the retro skate. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry, the um that like square, the original logo. Yeah. With the stick in the rink. Yeah. Yeah. If they had done that with the like nineties colors, the black. Dude, gold, yeah, red. there you go. There's a great fucking idea. That would have been sick. They or up. if they had done the they, they did. With they those did. colors. Yeah. Oh yeah, they, or, they definitely fucked up. Or as a third okay. jersey, they bring back the Bertuzzi, Naslin, Morrison era jerseys. Yeah, the black black orca. Everyone yeah, would yeah, love yeah. that. That would have been so sick. Yeah. Everyone. You would could have even that. still had the. I guess they took the Vancouver off of the front now. Finally, right. It looks better without it. It weighed. It yeah. looks way better. Yeah. They honestly, they did it because when they brought those jerseys out, the Olympics were coming here. Yeah. And they put Vancouver across the top. Uh, I mean, I good idea like, in that respect, honestly. Like, sure. <laughs> you know, capitalize on people being here and buying a, a local hockey jersey that says Vancouver right. on it. Yeah, go for it. Right. I didn't despise it. I didn't. But then it just, like, they kept him for too long. It's like, it was time to reinvent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Bertuzzi, yes, let's score. Yeah, I don't know. Bertuzzi. I don't know how you're going to do, like, a, a reverse retro jersey and not go with, like, the skate or the V. Like... Yeah. Seems yeah. crazy to me, man. Yeah. Maybe they switch it. Maybe they sell nothing and decide, you know what? Everybody else is killing it with these. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, I, I, I'm licking my lips at the Colorado one. The Colorado yeah, one, it's actually so sick. Shit. Yeah, like, like I, that's, that's a- exactly what teams should be doing with it. And, and plenty of them did a really, really good job, honestly. So many of them are really good. Like, what is it? Sky blue, white, and maroon? Like, yeah. mm, like I want to paint my freaking house that color, man. Yeah. Like, shoot. Yeah, it's it's really nice. Such quality. But yeah, I mean, on that jersey tip, I just haven't been getting... I haven't bought a jersey since, like, September, I don't think. Yeah. That's by far the longest I've gone in the last two years without buying one. And it's opened up lanes to get a bunch of free stuff. I asked my boss at work, he's always wearing these button ups. And I said, Hey, Braden, you have any extras of those? He's like, can you fit a medium? I'm like, I can try. He said, yeah, man, I'll bring you some. And then I show up to work one day and we have lockers in the locations lock up and he dumped 12 or 14 crispy button ups, borrowed nice. Jer's steamer and steamed them all up and take them to work wow. and wear them. And people are just like, Oh my God, you in the office now? Like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> but it's so weird how, the costume you throw on drastically affects how you're perceived, but maybe it's not weird. Maybe it's nature. Yeah. You know? Maybe it's nature, maybe. dude. You know, like maybe maybe it's, maybe it's natural. You know, all of nature is all things come to an end, and so does Pod. So 
Wow. That one. I mean, it's not my, not my best work. <laughs> yeah, not not my best work. Uh, that's fine. Lovers to friends. Still stuck it. Yeah. Still stuck it. All right. Okay. Well, wow. I mean, I don't know. Uh, this is this has been the the the, the tripod. Uh, what do we, what do we want? To, what's what's uh, what's the epi uh, name? We got. Uh, I like the webcam Ooh. sessions and the COVID tapes. I think uh, I think COVID both tapes. of those. Uh, I think that's what we should go with. The webcam was, COVID tapes. What sessions. was tri quads? What'd you say? Tri oh tri quads. Tri quads. Tri quads is what we call it when we if we ever have a fourth on we call it tri quads. Well, I mean we have. A, do, we, do you want to? I mean, I think we want so, to end the pod. That's true. <laughs> so I guess we'll talk about it another time. Thank you. Yeah, a different listening. pod, a different yeah. time. Comment. All right. Share, like, so subscribe. yeah. Um, Bye. Goodbye. Bye.